Uh, we're talking about the PIB, how communities uh, should be uh, treated in this uh, matter, how much they're really entitled to if they're the host community, and how uh, other benefiting communities should also be treated, how much exactly they're entitled to. And uh, now joining me to look at this tonight is the SSA to the President and Public Affairs, Ajuri Ngalale. Hi, Ajuri, good evening. Uh, Good evening to you. you. Thank, you, for, Thank you for joining us uh, from Abuja. Now, looking at the oil revenue sharing formula, is the signing of the PIB a chair in news at all? Well, uh, I can see on the uh, banner on the screen it says PIB passage. Um, the PIB has been passed now for quite some time. We're beyond that stage where uh, it has now been assented to by Mr. President. So now we've moved from PIA to PIA. It is the Petroleum Industry Act. And uh, we are we're, we're quite, uh, we're quite excited about the fact that we've been able to finally break this 20-year jinx uh, and really bring our uh, nation's oil and gas industry in total consonance uh, with uh, the very best. So there's really quite a lot to get into when you look at the, the content I'd be excited about. Yes, uh, uh, are you still there, Ajuri? Yes, I'm with you. Okay, okay. Uh, now, uh, yes, I, I agree with you. Uh, the PIA, the PIB, once it's passed, it's an act. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, now, uh, 3% versus 30%. How do you want to justify this? Also, isn't this opening up the leeway for fresh agitation in the near future uh, when host communities will begin to say, uh, well, they're already saying that, and, and well, maybe, the, uh, maybe we can say, let's play the devil's advocates. I mean, um, isn't this opening the leeway for fresh ag agitations in the near future? You know, by virtue of your the by virtue of the question, you know, this is a question I've gotten a lot lately, uh, and unfortunately, when the question is asked, it's often asked without any kind of context or any kind of specificity whatsoever about what three percent represents and what the thirty percent represents. Uh, you hear rumors like, "Oh, they're only doing they're only giving three percent to the Niger Delta development; they're giving thirty percent to the North." These are the kind of simplistic. Um, accusations that we've been hearing. Uh, but I want to, uh, for our viewers, uh, I want them to understand exactly how this works. I'm going to break it down really quickly. First of all, uh, the 3% that we're talking about is not 3% of profit oil uh, or 3% of revenues of the NNPC Limited. Uh, what will be the NNPC Limited over the next six months? Uh, we are talking about 3% of the total actual annual expenditure of the entire oil and gas sector in Nigeria. That is last year, that was 16 billion US dollars, 16 billion US dollars. Do the mathematics on that, 3% of that is approximately 500 million US dollars. Now, that's based on last year's estimates of 16 billion US dollars, okay? Now, if you recall, last year was the height of the COVID-19 global pandemic, where you had uh, production shutdowns around the world, where you had, of course, we still have OPEC curbs on our production. So instead of producing 2.3 million barrels per day, which we're capable of doing, we only were doing uh, 1.4 million barrels per day, and we continue to do that. So the implication of that is that in the next few years, we're going to return to our normal production meaning that the annual operating expenditure is going to rise from the 16 billion it was last year up to 25 billion into 30 billion. When that happens, the 500 million we're talking about for the host communities development trust uh, is going to skyrocket to nearly a billion. Already at 500 million, it's far greater in one year. The trust is going to be receiving more than what the NDDC receives because the NDDC does not receive up to 500 million dollars a year. That's point number one. Point number two, is when we talk about 30%, uh, we're not talking about 30% of the total annual operating expenditure of the entire sector. Those are two different, it's like it's just like comparing 3% of your salary or to, compared to 3% of your, your total, your company's total uh, profit. Uh, you get two different figures. That's basically what is being done when people compare 3% to 30%. It's two different worlds. So what we're saying is this, the 30% is not for host communities development. 
It's not to go and build hospitals in the north. That is not how it works. But that is what some uh, political opposition figures are trying to deceive Nigerians into believing. How this works is the 3% is for the development of host communities. So you're building whatever it is that those host communities need, schools, hospitals, bridges, whatever it is that they believe their needs are, that's where it's going to go. And they're going to be at the decision-making table, unlike NDDC, unlike derivation principle, which has largely failed in terms of Niger Delta development. Now, and the 30% we're talking about is not for uh, uh, to develop people's communities in the north or anywhere else. It is for the development of frontier basins across the country. By the way, uh, people don't recognize that we already have frontier basins in a number of states. A number of states, as you know, is not in the north. We have frontier basins in Cross River. Cross River is not in the north. So what we're saying is that this 30% we're talking about is not 30% of the entire sector's output like the host community development's 3% is. It is 30% of NNPC Limited's revenue. That is not including IOCs and all of that kind of stuff. So that's, that's point number three. Now, the final point is when we talk about frontier basin exploration, how it works is that that 30% we're even talking about is going to go to the, ex to, to the development of oil extraction infrastructure, exploration activities, and then the production infrastructure. That is to actually extract the oil from the ground. You have to put the infrastructure in place to achieve that. So we're not going to be building hospitals and schools in the in the frontier basins. We are we are limiting the focus, the scope in infrastructural development in those areas, so that Nigeria can expand the pie, right? Increase our revenues, and just the same way that Niger Delta oil money is shared to all federal to all of the federation, all local government areas, and mm -hmm. funds the entire country, right? It is the same way that any oil that is found in the north or in the east or in the west. It will still it'll have the same revenue sharing formula and will also go to all the all local government areas of the federation so we're really imploring all nigerians to really reject the kind of divisive analysis out there that suggests that everything must be viewed from a religious or ethnic lens yeah. uh, uh brilliant okay yeah, good summation uh thank you well uh, uh on the last note let, let me take you up on this as well uh, well uh, 50 billions worth of investments lost in the past uh, before we could get the bill passed in the first place. Why did we have to go this long road in the first place? Yeah, uh, yeah well, there's, there's no doubt that we have had uh, huge political interference over the course of the last several decades. Uh, I, I'm not breaking news uh, this evening on Plus TV by uh, saying that uh, there has been massive corruption. Uh, in uh, governance in Nigeria over the last several decades, right? And the implication of that is that people from the private sector are able to leverage on that to make excessive profits by bribing certain officials in certain places uh, to uh, re retain their undue advantages over the sector. Uh, that has now been broken uh, because President Mohamedou Buhari is not a leader who you can visit in the middle of the night with a briefcase full of euros to make him change his mind against what is in the interest of the nation. Uh, and as a result of his integrity, uh, we've been able to basically come up with a document that's a truly win-win document, uh, not just for the Nigerian government, the Nigerian people, the Nigerian economy, uh, but also for the investors who are ready to do legitimate business in Nigeria. Uh, what will not be allowed uh, within the PIA now, the Petroleum Industry Act, is we have put in a few uh, measures which are very important. Number one, uh, unprecedented transparency measures uh, stipulating that all actors in the sector must now undergo a forensic technical audit conducted by an independent auditor of their books every single year. Everybody's books will be open once a year, every single year uh, for public scrutiny. That is not just the international oil companies. That also involves even the regulators, the new regulators that will be established by this act the Nigerian Upstream Regulatory Commission, the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Agencies, they will, by this act, be mandated to open up their books uh, to independent auditors annually for public scrutiny. That has never happened in the history of the country. That is happening now. Secondly, uh, the president put in place uh, new, tax new tax reforms and regulations in the sector. Uh, for the first time, we now have a comprehensive set of financial sanctions, which we will levy out uh, to any stakeholder in the sector who is involved in tax avoidance, tax defaulting, uh, who is involved in uh, non-remittance or under-remittance of royalties and monies owed to the Federation. 
who's involved in erroneous accounting practices inter internally, et cetera. These are the measures that will transform the oil and gas sector for the better. Uh, and Mr. President has, uh, has really done well for the country in ensuring that this finally gets done. Thank you, Ajuri. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to have to get back to you in, in the coming days uh, to, to look at this issue and, and other sundry issues uh, in the news. Thank you, Ajuri. You make it very difficult for me to stop a conversation. Thank you, my brother. God Thank bless you. you and have a good night. Okay, you too. Yeah, bye. Cheers. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.